there's so much uh, emphasis on the drive, the driving championships, and the families and the drivers are all enthusiastic. But there's another extremely important aspect of this event that is separate from the event, and that is the inspections uh, championships. Can you tell us what the inspections competition entails? Yeah, I mean, similar to the truck driving championships, there's representatives from every state, hopefully, and we actually include Canada and the U.S. in this as well. So this year, for instance, we have 51 competitors and there's five from Canada and there's actually five from Mexico, which is a really good showing for us this year. Over. And the rest, of them, yeah, the rest of them are from the United States. So what we do is we have various elements to the competition and we we have some of the states have competitions to choose the person that comes to the inspector's championship similar to what they do with the truck driving side and other states select them through some sort of selection process that they have within the confines of the state and when they come to NACE they receive training for the first two days so I'll tell you a little bit about the training that's happening this year in later on in the interview but um they get trained for a couple of days on elements that they wouldn't normally get trained on in their state or province on a general basis. Uh, these are supposed to be some of the best of the best inspectors, so we like to give them additional training they're not accustomed to. Then when they get into the competition element, we have the competition on the floor with the American Trucking Association, so we are in the same area, but we have tractor trailers set up there, we have cargo tanks set up there, and we have non-bulk hazardous materials inspections set up there as well. So what we do is set violations and things in all of those items to have the inspectors come and see what they can find and how they document violations and are they putting them out of service and are they doing that correctly. What is the, the one thing that the inspectors tell you that is a big takeaway from them? Is this also a learning experience for them? Is this something that is very rewarding because they realize, you know, how much knowledge they have of the industry? I think the biggest takeaway that I always hear from inspectors, and I competed in this thing in 2001, so I can speak from experience. Uh, the biggest takeaway I had was when I walked away from there, I had contacts in almost every state. So from a roadside inspection standpoint, when you're standing on the road and I'm in Ontario, Canada, and I've got a truck from Montana, and all of a sudden now I have a contact in Montana that I can call and ask questions, the value of that is it's not even tangible. And the amount of uh, information you obtain from other inspectors just uh, honestly sitting around the bullpen sitting around at night waiting to go and I've heard that from the truck drivers too it's the camaraderie that you build with other competitors that's probably for them the biggest takeaway but they also really because we always ask them at the end we send them a survey ask them what they enjoyed what do they want the training is always a big element to them because um, we're doing like an ELD training this year for obvious yeah. reasons. It's coming down the pipe. So we try to keep them informed on the latest and greatest technology. So they do get a good takeaway from that too. Let's talk about that now. What is, uh, you know, you said it, ELD is coming out in December. Uh, I cover Congress on Capitol Hill. There was some buzz about whether or not uh, lawmakers were going to either halt or delay the implementation of ELDs. And uh, the training, what, what, what is it that the training is going to focus uh, on ELDs uh, next month? Not next month, uh, this month. Next month. week. Yeah. yeah so, week. <laughs> what we did this year was we invited the a lot of ELD vendors, as many vendors as we could, to come and do an ex exhibition. So they're actually doing an exhibit hall on Wednesday and Thursday during the competition. Thursday, it's open for the American Trucking Association attendees to come through and have a look at the ELD vendors. So we actually have 17 vendors that are coming. And, you know, we wanted to make it interactive. Again, these competitors, they're in a competition. So we've actually set violations into the ELDs. We're getting the ELD vendors. We're going to do a round robin with all the competitors and have the competitors go around the room to all 17 vendors. The vendors are going to show them how to navigate through the ELD, show them things like, 
you know, how does, what does their personal conveyance look like on the ELD, things that are required in the regulation that honestly right now inspectors are not comfortable with. And because it's new, you know, they're used to seeing AOBRDs, they're not used to seeing ELDs. So there's things that they need to get comfortable with and the more comfortable inspectors are with the device, the easier it will be for the device to be accepted on the side of the road. So our intent this year with the ELD training, not so much to drill down into the rule, not so much to you know tell them how to enforce the rule, but to bring in the vendors and kind of let them play with all these devices. So when in fact they see these roadside, they'll be able to better understand, maybe help out the driver if the driver's not 100%, because there is going to be a learning curve on both sides with ELDs, no question. You know, the officers need to learn to use, you know, there's, there's countless numbers of them now, you know, on the FMCSA website. So officers are no longer going to come across a potential of five, six, seven AOBRDs. They could potentially come across over 50 different kinds of ELDs. So they need to become familiar with how all of these different devices work for the comfortableness of enforcing the rule at the end of the day. So, this so I'm is thinking it's going to be fun. A two-day training, uh, you expect? Uh, we're doing a two-day training, but it's not all ELD related. So the ELD training focus is a four-hour complement of all the training. The inspectors are also going to receive training on air disc brakes and ABS brakes for a period of time. So we've got Wabco coming in and they're going to show, you know, how air disc brakes are put together and taken apart. Again, more uh, a higher level of training than necessarily what the inspectors require to do the job roadside, but good information for them to know. And then on the Tuesday afternoon, all afternoon, they're going to be getting hazardous materials training. Uh, it's always something that's a little complicated and something they always ask for review on. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we always do a survey at the end asking them what kind of training they're looking for. Hazardous materials is always on there. Now, part of the reason, I'll be honest, they want hazardous materials training is that's part of their competition in two days. So a refresher is always a good idea on Tuesday afternoon when you know you're going to be tested on it on Thursday. That's pretty so. Funny. Yeah, it's not it's not bad. Often we do motor coach training for a four hour block. We did that last year. We're not doing that this year because we built the ELDs in instead. But they have a motor coach that they have to inspect on Friday. So that's always something else that they like because it gives them a refresher. Not all inspectors are trained on motor coaches. So sometimes we train them and it may be the first motor coach that they've actually been under. And a motor coach is different than a truck. So those that are comfortable with trucks like to be comfortable with motor coaches so every year we try to switch up the training to make it new and fresh so ELD seem to be the biggest focus we had this year so oh yeah there's a lot yeah. of buzz about ELDs yeah uh, and Kerry what is uh, the toughest part of the competition what is the one thing that you hear over and over really challenges the inspectors well stress for the most part I mean okay. honestly we don't we don't set any violations that these guys are not accustomed to seeing on the side of the road on any given day. But similar to the truck driving side, I'm sure, the second you put a stopwatch on somebody and have them do something precisely, it causes them undue stress. So despite the fact we tell them just relax, do it like you do it every day, it's it's nerve wracking because we, you know, we try to make it as normal as possible, but I've never inspected a truck on a convention center floor with somebody holding a time watch over me. So yeah. when I did, it was a bit stressful. Um, the other thing, it's really good for us to watch because a lot of the industry comes, we probably have as many industry folks sign up for NACE as we do state folk to assist and help and they judge. So it's really good to be able to, you know, observe inspectors you know, the finest inspectors do what they do and we can observe, um, you know, are they all doing inspections uniformly? Are they doing it in the steps they should be? It's really good for, I, commit, I uh, chaired the vehicle committee for 10 years while I was still working for the government. And every year I would set violations that I knew that maybe officers don't understand them correctly. It's a great way to observe them, are they doing the procedure? Are they skipping steps in the procedure? Are they missing things? Because at the end, we do a briefing with them all and tell them what was set 
what they missed. By that point, you've scored everything. So you get a good idea of where the inconsistencies were and you can point it out to them. And you're hoping that they take that back to the state that they came from and hopefully implement it down the pipe to the other hundreds of officers that they work with in the state. And finally, Carrie, can you tell us what really makes uh, an inspector just a formidable inspector, a great inspector? What are the qualities of a person, a uh, woman or man, who really you know, takes the time to learn the craft, learn the mechanics, to be a premier inspector? I think there's honestly a lot of qualities. I think the main quality that I've seen, and this is just my own opinion, but an officer that's fair and an officer that takes the time roadside to explain what is wrong with the truck. The other big thing, and it comes up a lot in our meetings and it comes up a lot with industry, is a good inspector will do a really good job of explaining what the violations are on the inspection report. It's something, documenting violations is really important because on the side of the road, it's an inspector and a driver. There's a lot of people past the inspector and driver that need to understand exactly what was wrong with that truck at the time. So if the inspector is thorough and does their job and writes down the violation and not only what it is, but where it is and things like that, then when the inspection report gets back to the company, then the company can better understand what exactly was wrong. It really, really helps if the inspector is not only an inspector, but an educator at the same time and able to explain things. That, so not only an inspector, but also a person who is able to teach and improve uh, the, the, the drivers by educating them. Right. I mean, I never, I, I, I say this to people often when I was inspecting trucks roadside, I never put a driver out of service and he ever walked away from me wondering what was wrong with his truck or with a ticket in his hand wondering why he got it. So there's, you know, there's a regulation and there's an out of service criteria. Take the time to explain that to the driver when in fact something has gone wrong and he's got something on his inspection report. He needs to know and his company needs to understand because if they don't, then nothing's ever going to improve. Exactly. So, yeah. so like those it. are the best officers for, for me, for sure. We can't wait to report on the championships. Uh, this is really exciting for us and very important for the industry. And Carrie, thank you so much for joining us on Transport Topics. You're welcome. Have a good day.